You know, it's fall and it's just classic big fish patterns where we're vertically jigging deep rock structure. And this body of water that we're on today, this is one of the best areas to do it. Lake Cabotogama here in northern Minnesota. I just love coming up here in the fall. Big smallmouths, big walleyes, six pound tests in a jig. It just doesn't get any better than that. Beautiful fish right there, look at that. You know, it's fall and it's just classic big fish patterns where we're vertically jigging deep rock structure. And this body of water that we're on today, this is one of the best areas to do it. Lake Cabotogama here in northern Minnesota. I just love coming up here in the fall. Big smallmouths, big walleyes, six pound tests in a jig. It just doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, that's that's like a good one. Nice work, Tim. Well, this isn't for the faint of heart today. Cold wind, hard blowing, walleye stabbing. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's why we're out here, right we're there. Out here. <laughs> <laughs> one of the best times of the year, if you ask me. You were using a shiner that time? Yeah, I had a, a medium shiner on with this nice blue and white tungsten jig. Dropped it down there. She couldn't stand it. Beautiful, nice walleye. Well, that's a nice start. I know what it is. We've been here five minutes, right on the spot here. <laughs> we're kind of cheating, though. You know what we're doing, and you've made this comment before when we fished up here. But you know, a lot of people make the mistake of fishing structure instead of fishing fish. And you know, it's windy out here. It's a bit chilly, but we're just going around until we mark a couple of bumps on the bottom that we, you know, are pretty sure are walleyes. We're just sitting over the top of those fish, and you know, when you eliminate all that dead water and just fish marks, a lot of cases it doesn't take long. Yeah, I mean, it's just a. Fantastic feel when something hits that tungsten jig, isn't it? It is. That's a shortcut to catching fish right there is trusting your electronics. That's it. Let's get another one. You know, some of the primary patterns for fishing walleyes on Cabotogamo Lake, in the spring, a lot of people will go after them with small jigs, shiner minnows, fathead minnows, finding them on the points and the humps and the reefs, even the shorelines with crankbaits and stickbaits and things of that nature. So then the fall fishing, the big fish put their feed bags on, and a lot of times, as we did today, we went and chased them in the waters off of those reefs, just off the tops where you find them in 15 to 18 feet of water, and then you just drop off that edge to where you mark them. Sometimes it's as shallow as 20 feet, and sometimes you can go down at about 30 foot mark. Then going after them with a little heavier jig and a shiner minnow is uh, usually a, a, a foolproof way of catching them. Got a good one, Jason? Yeah. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Fish does not want to come up off the bottom. Wow. Fish is strong. <laughs> it's attached to that bottom and it don't want to come up. Look yeah. at that pull. I just love this. You know, you take six pound mono, we're using a three eighths ounce jig, fish and blow the boat, you get that thump. And then when you lay into them, you just got a big heavy fish and that rod tip is just bouncing. Man, that's. Yeah, this one's got some shoulders. That's good living right there. Look at that. Can't even budge that fish. Oh, right oh here, here she comes. Oh, look at there. Look at there. <laughs> Beautiful fish. Nice. Look at that. I just love how you get just get these green tints on these fish. These fish are just beautiful up here. Just beautiful golden walleyes. That's a dandy right there. Can't build a prettier walleye than that right there. Yeah, gorgeous. 
Thank you, that was fun. Oh! <laughs> You know, these fish are on this just deep rock structure and it's classic, you know. So often in so many different bodies of water you get late in the fall and the types of spots you're looking for resemble a volcano coming up from the bottom. They're just sharp breaks, usually rock, some type of a hard bottom, but you're just looking for that sharp drop. And usually the fish will be right off that drop or they'll be right off the base of it. And it's all about boat control and these fish are on these small spots. but. What we're doing is we're scooting along here kind of fast. You know, I'm, I'm backing up into the wind. I've got a drift sock out the front and I might be going say 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 miles an hour backing up into that wind. And when I start marking fish, then I just stall it out where I just crawl and I can just fish straight up and down. And so a lot of times I'm watching the angle of the line. When I'm looking for the fish, my line might be at a 45 degree angle. Once I get right up on top of them, then I'll try to fish right over the top of them and fish vertically, but just a matter of, trying to keep your bait in front of the fish. Here's one, Jason. Oh my goodness. I'll get reeled up here. I tell you. That fish doesn't want to come unglued, does it? No, you know, Jason, I seen you hit him a couple on that black tungsten jig and I was using that blue and white and it was kind of slow for me and I put that black jig on I'm telling you it wasn't down there for a minute <laughs> this old girl's got some shoulders on her yeah I'll get the net here for you yeah good feeling fish coming up there's some color oh, oh yeah, yeah. Beautiful oh walleye. yeah look at that these are just gorgeous fish there. Yeah, you know, that black isn't very pretty, but you get these gray, dark days, and sometimes those dark colors can be the ticket. Kind of a rule of thumb. Cloudy days, I use the dark jigs a lot. I started with blue and white because I had it tied on, but uh, sunny days, I like to go to a brighter jig, but I'll tell you something, this, uh, this cloud cover that we have today uh, seems to be the hot ticket right now. Oh, geez, look at there. <laughs> do they make a prettier walleye? I don't know if you can see this on camera, Jason, but there's a beautiful blue tint on this walleye, too. Just really pretty. Just a beautiful walleye. I'll let her go back. A lot of wind chop today. This is a tungsten jig, and I'll tell you what I really like about them is they're not as big, but they're heavy. This is a 3 h jig we're doing today. And we're fishing with a lot of chops, so we wanted to go a little bit heavier. And uh, a variety of colors. We had that blue and white that we started with and uh, caught one fish on it, but then Jason started really hitting them with this black. And it's typical, this color, the, the, the darker color when we get this overcast. And so when I tied that black on there, literally not a minute down there, Jason, boom, hit it. You know, that's the thing is every day there's a different recipe for success. There's a fish right there. Another one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, that we've got, you know, we've got rainbows, we've got fat heads, we've got shiners that we've been experimenting with. And, you know, today is just one of those days where we have to grind it out. It's a tough bite. We're marking fish. We're just trying to figure out what they want, but small shiners seem to be getting bit. Oh yeah, that might be. There. <sighs> well, probably about an 18 inch walleye. Nice fish. About an inch long, too big to keep. And the size limit out here is about 17 inches? Yeah, the slot limit is uh, 17 to 28 currently. So anything between 17 and 28 must be released on the walleyes. And there are a really good supply of healthy fish that are in that slot, big fish that are in that slot that we return. But you know, the nice thing about it is we have a lot of young fish coming up. A lot of 12 and a half, 13 inch fish that were a couple years old, and uh, and we have a lot of eater fish in that 15, 16, 17 inch range. So it's a real he healthy fishery when you have a good variety of every size that you can fish, which we're catching out here today. There he is. I got him. 
All right. <laughs> that looks like a good fish. <laughs> Pretty Don't nice you love fish. that? I know. He, he, I picked it up. He dropped it. My hands are so cold I can hardly feel them, but I'm having, I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> oh, man, look at that. I Don't you just love those deep boom, boom, boom? Yeah, yeah. It's just... <laughs> I'm going to stand up and enjoy it, this one. You just feel him stretching that I mean, look at that rod. He's giving me all I want. It's just fun right there, Jason. You know, I picked it up. I set the hook. He was there. He drops it. I drop it right back down. Oh, I need the net. There she is. Yeah, that's a dandy. Look at that. <laughs> oh, this gorgeous fish. Boy, that is a beautiful, beautiful Cabotogan walleye right there. Oh, good save. <laughs> That's what happens when you got wind and waves and trying to control a boat and the whole works. <laughs> yeah, that would change the complexion of the show huh? <laughs> from here on out. <laughs> yeah, we'd be in trouble. That's a nice walleye right there. Yeah, it is. And a beauty. Wow, that's a beauty. Wow. All right, nice work there. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. It's not for the faint of heart out here today. We have to have a good boat controller, and the wind is blowing pretty choppy across here, but uh, I don't know if there's anything I'd rather be doing. No, I love this. You know, you try to get as many days as you can before it's over with, and some of the best big fish patterns every year happen late in the fall. I mean, it can be brutal to be out here, but it's worth it. You know what's funny about it is, Jason, your hands are freezing when we're not really, when we're not hooked up. But as soon as that old rod bends, I don't <laughs> yeah. feel any cold anymore. No, you get your second winter and you put your fingers back in, the, back in to get a minnow, huh? I know. It. <laughs> great, great time. The program is fairly simple in the sense that you're fishing sharp breaking structure and there's a lot of rock. And so the key is not to drag your jig. You have to be straight up and down. And, and some of it is just so you can get through and fish those rocks. If you drag up or drag down, you're going to get snagged. And so boat control is very important, but also fishing below the boat. And typically we're using six pound monofilament line. A high quality of graphite rod is, is paramount in the sense that you got to be able to distinguish the bottom. You got to be able to distinguish the pickups. Some of these fish are going to punch it pretty hard, but a lot of cases you're just slowly lifting it up and dropping it very methodically. And you just get a little bit of extra weight there and you lift up and you can feel that fish move and you set the hook. But uh, you also have to have the backbone to set the hook because you might be out in 30 feet of water. And so it's very precise surgical fishing, but it's very, very, very effective. Got him. Good fish, Tim. Wow. <laughs> Can't even get the rod tip out of the water. Holy cow. This, this is, is a one, good Jason? one here. This is a good fish here. Boy, that fish just. You just hammer it? Well, not at really a hard bite, but he's just there. Waves are pushing us around pretty good. It's just a fight to stay right on this ledge. It's a spot on the spot. Back trolling is working pretty well just to try to control the boat here, but I just want to see what this is. This is a good fish. Here she comes. Look oh, at yeah, there. Look oh, at yeah. That. Look at there. Oh, beautiful. There. <laughs> All right. Beautiful fish. Nice job, Jason. Nice fish. Good fish. Hooks popped out, but a great walleye. You know, I think this wind is picking up, but catching walleyes like that, who cares? Put her back here. Boy, I got to warm my hands up here at some point, but this jig we're using, it's Tungsten jig, it's made by Clam Pro Tackle, and it's a denser metal than what lead is. It's a harder metal. What I like about tungsten with walleye fish, especially in deep waters, I can keep this jig straight up and down below the boat. I can keep it in the cone angle of my electronics. And so what I'm seeing on the graph, when I'm marking fish, I know that that jig is right there. So, you know, you're not only trying to control the boat, but you're also trying to control your presentation to make sure that everything that you're doing is right below the boat because it's very precise fishing. It's spot on the spot. And that's where tungsten can really shine.
Seems like a good one, Tim. Good one? Yeah. Rocking and rolling in these waves, that's for sure. I just tried a brighter color there, bright pink, and we got a couple of paths we're still marking fish and didn't get any biters, so we switched up colors here to see if we could try to mix it up a little bit and try to trigger a few more fish out of here. But boy, just a chunk, just a chunk of a walleye. You know they're big when they when they you feel it right here in the arms. This yeah, a, this is a real. When you one. feel the handle on your rod bending. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just two handing it the whole time. Oh, I love Isn't that. That a good feeling. Oh man. Yeah, that's a dandy there. That's a lot of backbone on this fish. To me, this is what fishing's all about. It's these two or three minutes that you're fighting a fish, four or five minutes. <laughs> yeah. That's what life's all about. Here, I see some color. Coming with the net here. Look at, look at the south. There we go. Oh. <laughs> nice fish, man. Nice alive. fish. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's a dandy. Oh, easy, girl. Oh my goodness, sakes. Nice work there. Talk about fat. That's what it's all about right there. Big golden walleyes. Came into that, huh? Hands are cold, but <laughs> it's worth every second of that. I think so. <laughs> I think probably my favorite time to fish is the fall, anywhere from September all the way into mid-October. Part of the reason is there's absolutely nobody on the lake. I mean, you really much have the lake to yourself. Uh, the temperature, the leaves are turning. Uh, there's just so much uh, beauty that surrounds you. And I catch myself and pinch myself sometimes thinking, man, I'm, this is the luckiest thing in the world. I'm out here in the most beautiful country in the world, and I'm catching these great big walleyes. I'm just wishing everybody could share it with me. You like a heavier one? It's a heavier fish, yeah. <laughs> you know, Jason, it's as cold as I'm not sure if I should have my hand on my reel or wiping my nose. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but this old fish yeah. give it. This fish has given me a chance to do both because it's bending. I can't reel anyway. It's bending so much. Yeah, if our teeth are chattering, it might be hard to. <laughs> Here she comes, though. Yeah, another really beautiful right there, oh, right yeah. below the boat. Oh, yeah, look at there. Oh, look at that. All right. What a day, Jason. What yeah. a day. I'll say. I mean, it is windy and cold. It's, the temperature's cold, the water's warmer, and we're pulling these big walleyes off the bottom. It is unbelievable fun right we're here. We're the only ones out here. <laughs> no, see, no, <laughs> we're the only ones maybe foolish enough, huh? Is it possible we're the only people on this whole entire lake? <laughs> right now we are. <laughs> oh, I don't even want to take my hands out of the water. I'll tell you something, they are consistent in size, Jason, and they are wide at the shoulders. Man, that doesn't get old right there. Beautiful fish. There she goes. Love coming out here in the fall, and you know, you're going to see big walleyes, but they're just beautiful fish. I mean, they're thick, they're fat, they're healthy looking. They've just got the most beautiful colors on them. And, um, you know, beautiful fish in a beautiful setting. That's what I love about fall on Cabotogama. Look at that. Nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I think fish. the wind's getting stronger. You can hardly stand up anymore. At times. Wow. <laughs> it has been one after the other, Jason. Oh my goodness. Beautiful fish right there, look at that. We spend a lot of time up here in Cabotogo. We get up here every year. You know, it's so cool about this body of water. There's just so many different presentations. You can come up here spring, summer, fall. There's always a neat pattern that's happening. You can catch them jigging, you can catch them trolling, live bait rigging. 
big small malls, big walleyes, beautiful place, beautiful lake. You know, and you get out here, it's just, it's just so remote. And you know, you're looking at a, at a national park, a national forest. And uh, you know, at the same time, there's several resorts that, that cater to families, that cater to anglers. And so, you know, once you leave that dock, you know, you just got this big, beautiful lake. And you, you know, so often you feel like you're all by yourself out here. And, that's why people come and fish and fall in love with Cavatogam.